Welcome to today's 3D print. So, what happens if even your biggest printer can't print something that you want to print? And not only that, you want to print it really, really big. So even like two or three pieces doesn't work. It's 3D printing Legos. Let's talk about community builds. So we've seen this before. I saw it at Maker Faire. Didn't think much of it. It was cool. I took some pictures. You saw famous characters all cubed out. And then I actually got involved in my first one. These will be going with me to East Coast Rep Rep Forum. So the F3D PCH community build their logo, their sign, their F3D PCH community sign. They're going to make it six feet by four feet. Like you know, huge. This thing's going to be big. So how do you make something like that? Well, you do it like Legos. You break it up into individual parts. And what's really cool is that once you break up something like that into individual parts, you can do something very el something else that's very interesting. You can allow the community to help you build it, especially if it's interesting enough for them and it doesn't cost much. So what they did is they broke the um, object or sign into 125 millimeter by 125 millimeter chunks. And then you can send them an email and say, I'd like a chunk to print. And you can either mail it in or bring it in person. And so I got my first chunk. Now this one is actually made of um, recycled PLA. See, this is the other cool part about a community build. If the colors aren't that important, and especially since most people aren't going to have the colors and most people can't do multicolor prints, you're going to get a very cool variety of parts with different filaments on different printers with different settings, all giving it a very... Um, organic look. So this is printed on the Ender 3 in Philobot's recycled PLA. And I quickly realized that their settings were uh, not good for me. So this is another part of this thing. You can change things. So uh, this thing's built like a brick. If I threw this at you, it'd probably kill you. <laughs> so I decided it doesn't need to be that tough. I like the five top layer, so I kept that because that keeps the surface that everybody sees, as long as you're not over extruding, very pretty. But otherwise, I now fill them with 8% every other infill. Enough for the support, enough for strength, uses a fraction of the amount of infill that this thing used. So that's your first chunk. This is coordinates X, 15, Y, 3. So 15 on the X and 3 on the Y, and that's where this little chunk will be. So if you this will also be a filament showcase. Why not? I like filament. There's, I mean, the second coolest thing about 3D printing is all the different filaments you can use. Notice, but I had to take that phone call. That was important. Um, so I don't know what order these are in, so I'm just gonna show them all to you. This one here is printed using Maker Geeks Pearl Starlight Blue. Very pretty color. And something I like to do on the back, I put who I am, the coordinates, the printer I used, and the filament I used. This way. Anybody can look and see what made that part. This is um, um, 3D Solutex Ultra Black. So it's like a black chrome. This actually had a little glitch. <laughs> the power got cut off. I had too much power going into a uh, lower than I realized power strip, so the circuit breaker kicked. And. Um, the power resume worked. When I turned the printer back on, it resumed the print with just that little bit of missing area there. If only there's one more top layer, you won't even see that. But uh, that's that Ultra PLA from 3D Sciatech. Black, I call it black chrome. Very pretty. This is Protopasta's Clover Metallic Green. This is an underrated filament. It is absolutely stunning. I so love this filament. And this is printed on the Ender 2. Uh, almost all of these are printed on the Ender 2 or the Ender 3. This one here was printed on the i3 Mega from Anycubic. This one here was printed on the Ender 3 and eSun's PLA Pro Gold. This one here is um, Protopasta's All That Glitters. Their silver transparent glitter filament. On the Ender 2. This is Cyanoc Red, film I got for $10 a kilogram on the Ender 2. So this is even with cheap filament. <clears throat> As you can see, they print just fine. 
This chunk was printed on my FL Sun QQ Cricket in some Alpta Purple PLA, another one of those 999 kilogram deals I got. Uh, Cricket did not a bad job. I mean, it's not as clean a surface, not as smooth as the Ender 2 or Ender 3, but it did a perfectly good job printing that. This is on the Ender 2 in Protopasta's Cupid's, Cupid's Crush Pink. I like this one. That's a nice pink. We're stacking up Legos here. This is Yogi's Red Silk. I call it Salmon Silk on the Ender 2. The Ender 2 does a truly amazing job of printing these things. This is also on the Ender 2. 3D Cytex Ultra Silk Purple. Really shows off the color nicely. This is Maker Geeks Pearl Poison Ivy Green, printed on the Ender 2. And the last piece, I had 13 pieces that I did. This was also on the this is on the Ender 3 in Velorox Metal Copper. Apparently this actually has a little copper inside of it. Really cool. What's that? Uh, just a piece of dust. Really nice color. This is normally like 30 bucks a kilogram. They had it on or $25 a kilogram or something like that. They had it on sale that one day for $10 a kilogram. I regret only buying two. I wish I would have bought more. This is really nice. This is nice stuff. And that's it. There's my 13 pieces. So if you want to see these, if you're going to East Coast Rep Rep Forum, check it out. These will be my contributions to the community build. And essentially, you would take these pieces. I don't have any pieces that are congruous with each other. But you would assemble them, literally, like Legos. Each piece would assemble next to another piece and another piece. And over time, these pieces would all line up just like a puzzle, like a, like a literally like a puzzle. And they would all line up and form the entirety of whatever it is you're doing. So you would just line up all your pieces. That's why they have coordinates on them. So X13Y5, so the next one would be X13Y6. And they would all line up and form your big giant, whatever it is, that you want to build. I My next step is to find out how they do this. I imagine there's a dedicated piece of software that takes an STL file and chops it up. So when I go to East Coast Rep Rep Forum, I'm gonna ask them what they use to do that and get back to you guys on how to do it. Although you'll probably find it before then. <laughs> That's it. I will see you guys at East Coast Rep Rep Forum. Well, this video will probably be after East Coast. Yeah, this video will definitely be after East Coast Rep Rep Forum. <laughs> So you're going to already hear about East Coast Rep Rep Forum before you watch this video. So yeah, that's the thing about recording in advance and posting the videos as you need them. You guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Community builds coming together.